Welcome to Petology, your destination for all things furry, fuzzy, feathery, and scaly. I'm your host, Blair Malstravich, and today we have a Halloween-themed show for you. We're going to be talking about candy, we're going to be talking about black cats, we're going to talk about creepy crawlers, and uh, we're actually also going to have our expert panel here, of course, and... Don't worry, we are definitely doing animals in costumes. But before we get to all that goodness, we're going to head over to a new segment called Meet the Pets with Dwayne Dahl. Dwayne? Hey, everyone. I am here in the bowels of the Shaw Studios, which we have converted to a doggy green room of sorts. And we're going to be talking to some of the people and some of the pets that you're going to be seeing today. Now, who do I have here? Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm from Rough House Boarding Kennel and Training Center. Uh, I'm here with Sammy Marv, Smart Dogs. Um, this is Tink. That's Tink. This is Tink the Chihuahua. Oh, cool. Now look, I can see nice little, you got the little wings, a little costume here. I mean, we're, we're doing a bit of a Halloween theme here today, so it's kind of nice that we actually have somebody in costume. It's fantastic. She, she, she loves her she, bee, she. bee costume. Be, it, it's one of her personal favorites, right? She's got like a whole wardrobe of them, I guess, right? Fantastic. Well, you know, you can never be too careful. You always got to have outfits for every occasion. So, awesome. Nice to meet you, and we're going to be talking to more of you later. Next up, I've got Leland. Leland? Leland yeah. from City Winnipeg Animal Services with uh, Maximus, who's up to our adoption. Maximus. Oh, so, someone's seen Gladiator a few times. Mm -hmm. hey, what, what is Maximus? Anyway? Maximus is like a two-year-old Rottweiler mix. Uh -huh. He was found as a stray running the streets of Winnipeg with no license. Oh, dear. And now he's up for adoption. Great dog, looking for an experienced dog owner who's got really strong arms. Well, that's... Not me, but anyways, it's nice to... The great thing about volunteering with Shaw is I get to deal with my phobias, and having a dog here like this, yeah, it's right up my alley. So anyways, it's great to have you here. We'll be talking more, more with you about animal licensing a little, little later on. And last but not least, I've got my girl Marlene over here. Hello. How are you? I'm great, thanks. And you? I'm fantastic. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a pet for you here, so okay. so I'm gonna You're I'm gonna, gonna pretend be to be pet. Marlene's little pet for now. Oh so God. she's gonna be helping us uh, doing a little bit of wrangling uh, now. So you're gonna stick around for the show? I sure am. Well, it's great to have you. So I'm gonna throw it back to Blair inside the studio, and uh, we'll be over in a second. Sounds good. All right. Well, now as we uh, as we interestingly let Dwayne make his way back <laughs> into the studio, um, let's talk about let's do our expert panel discussion. What we're going to talk about today is you see I have all this delicious food in front of me. It's actually just candy. Uh, I'm not going to eat all this on TV because that would be really weird. But because it's Halloween, we're going to talk about this candy isn't great for all of us. I eat a lot of it, but it's can't, it's not good for us, and it's definitely not good for your pets. And it could even be fatal. So let's talk about some of the candy maybe we should avoid or stop your pets from getting a hold of, basically. There's uh, a lot of things that we really want to keep away from pets. I mean, there's stuff that people love, but there's large quantities of it floating around at Halloween. And especially chocolate can be particularly damaging to dogs. Um, a lot of people out there already know that chocolate isn't great for dogs. Uh, what they don't know is how little of it can be harmful to your pet. Um, as little as two ounces of milk chocolate uh, can be enough to make a dog very sick um, and lead to vomiting and diarrhea. Um, if you if you ante up to three ounces, you can get into a, a state where animals will have seizures and um, and anywhere between four and five ounces can be fatal. Uh, when you start looking at things like dark chocolate and semi-sweet chocolate, the effects are even more pronounced. Um, for a small dog, say 11 pounds and under, as little as two ounces of, of dark chocolate or semi-sweet chocolate can be fatal to a small dog. Oh, wow. So so that kind of stuff really needs to be kept away from them. Um, and even beyond just generally chocolate, um, uh, a lot of that candy that's going out, I mean, it's really rich in fat and sugar, and that's not the kind of stuff that dogs are geared towards, um, so, but they will be very, very interested in it. I mean, uh, I mean, if you leave it out, a dog will get into it and probably just gorge themselves on it, so um, they can really give themselves a, a, a an incredibly upset stomach that can lead to vomiting and diarrhea. Some dogs can progress to the point where they have pancreatitis um, oh and they may need well. to be hospitalized um, and, and have a lot of treatment. Um, so just generally it's best to keep them away from all of that stuff and, and not give them any exposure to it. So Now we have all that knowledge because <laughs> your place on this is you're the vet for this, for this show. Yeah. Now, why do you think it's 
it's so difficult for dogs to just be wanting to eat everything. Um, I think they're geared towards trying to get in food when they can get it. I mean, there's still that basic instinct that if there's food there, I'm going to eat it because it may not always be there. And that goes back to generations ago when they were wild. and. And food wasn't always available on a daily basis. And so if something delicious presents itself, I mean, a dog is going to go for it. So, and they're not as inhibited as people are. I think the <laughs> packaging doesn't help either. You have something that's that shiny or that pronounced yeah. graphically or whatever, that's probably one of the worst things you can see because it's going to gravitate right towards yeah. it. That's a great and point. The crinkly the, sound. Yep, exactly. absolutely. You know, we, we talk to, to our trainer, Sammy Marr, of course. Mm -hmm. What do you think dogs are seeing when they see anything that makes that crinkle sound? Yeah, well, I think like he was saying, the shine, the crinkle sound, you know, tearing it apart. Yep. I know lots of dogs, it's just the fun in that. Um, <laughs> and dogs have such a great sense of smell. Yes. I mean, you could have one little package of candy um, yeah. in the bottom of someone's bag, and a dog is very likely going to be able to smell it, right? Yeah. And they're going to get in there, and they're going to find it somehow. Is, so. there, is there a way to work like with the behavioral to have not have them so keyed up for food? I'm keyed up for food all the time. <laughs> Keep but the candy. But Diddle. still, Diddle. that's why the candy's way over there. But is there anything you can work on to sort of calm that a little well, bit? Well, I think a lot of impulse control exercises, um, mm. th what we refer to that is teaching dogs not to just push for something, push for something. Mm -hmm. um, so that can really help with dogs that are scavenging through things. Um, but I mean, training in general, the more a dog listens, so even if they're going to grab, they have the grapes mm. in their mouth or something, and mm. you tell them to drop it or leave it, right. you know, they'll spit it out, so. I, so I, some of it is training the people too, right? Yes, Where yes it's, I mean, for sure. You can have a dog that's very well trained, but you're not gonna go out of your way to throw temptation at your dog. Yes. And so, of course. you know, yes. it, it really becomes about making sure that you're not doing anything to increase the risk of ingestion yeah. of things that are not good for your dog. So, so one thing we wanna talk about, which is you brought along some great examples, Sammy mm. was saying she brought up the grapes, but let's mm. talk about some of the other things that we should try to avoid our dog getting hold of. Yeah, I mean this time of year, I mean Halloween is a big one, but I mean we're also gearing into mm -hmm. Thanksgiving and mm -hmm. Christmas is not far around the corner. Yes. There's a lot of things yes. for, pe for, for people to leave out that their dogs can have access to. Lots of people baking, so chocolate is a big one. Um, also, we have to worry about people baking where they might be using rape, uh, not grapes, um, raisins. Um, and I mean, what we've um, sort of, it, it's, we don't have it down to an exact number or how each individual dog is gonna be affected, um, but for a small dog, as little as 14 to 15 grapes um, can, oh, wow. can affect wow. them and can and be toxic to their kidneys. And when you think about how that translates to raisins, I mean, raisins are basically just dehydrated grapes, right? right? So that becomes literally almost less than a tablespoon of, of raisins that can be toxic to your pet. Basically so. what you could say is almost there's no real safe level yeah. of something yeah. sweet. You're better just to not expose yeah. them at like all to it. When it yeah. hits the ground, you go get it yeah. before yeah. they get Absolutely. it. That's the best yeah. thing. Yeah. That's better training to leave it. I'm bad because I will admit sometimes I uh, drop it and I'll go, the dog will get it. <laughs> we don't want the dog to get it no. because that can be scary. Now I said scary which is a brilliant segue into Halloween costumes. We have. Ooh. He's done this once or twice before. Yeah, right? It's that good. <laughs> Don't brag, because it's not that great. Uh, <laughs> we're basically, what we're going to talk about here is I uh, posted something on our social media, which of mm -hmm. course we'll talk about social media mm -hmm. later. Um, I sent out, come on guys, all you pet lovers out there, what I need is I need to see the examples of some of your pets in costume. Now, okay. we don't have a stance on this. We don't say it's it's not good to put your pet in a costume. We don't say it is good to put your pet in a costume. It's whatever you want to do. And of course, as you were saying, just whatever your pet is comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at this mm -hmm. first one. Let's this is, oh, we lost it. Halo disappeared. There. Oh, oh. Halo. Yeah. <laughs> Haley is dressed as a, it looks like a fairy princess. Yeah. I'm, um, yep. This is sent to us by Bonnie. That Adorable. Is cute. So what's, that is what cute. is that? That's a chihuahua? Would, That's a chihuahua. That would be my guess. That's yeah. not a St. Bernard? A, no. <laughs> no. Might oh. be a bit of Great Dane. Start your St. Bernard. I love that. Okay, let's look at our next one. Oh, this oh. is Penny. Okay, this one is so great. Uh, of oh. course, now viewers out there, you have to know the screen we're seeing it on is kind of smaller than what you're going to see at home, but it depends what kind of TV you have. Um, <laughs> basically, this dog, if we get closer, is actually dressed as a banana split. And this was <laughs> sent, oh, this is Penny, it was sent to us by Danielle. It's like a weird dog is a banana split. That, I can, that, I can is, that is weird. It's, I feel like I've had a dream about that, but we'll just leave that. That's another show. <laughs> yeah. that's, next, that's next time. So this one. Oh, Aww. that's Aww. Another chihuahua. This I is also sent to here. us by Bonnie. <laughs> See, 
they have so many great costumes yeah. for for dogs, and it's just simple something on top, something yeah. on their body, something easy. Let's move on to the next one. Thank you, Bonnie, for sending that in. Now, oh. this is Sugar. <laughs> sugar. Sugar sent. She's dressed as a bee or he. I'm yeah. Sugar. I'm gonna think. Let's say girl. Can Almost. we guess girl? I would assume. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. And um, this is sent to us by Aaron. Now we'll do one more photo because there's so many because you guys were so great on social media by sending me these. This is uh, Shania and Aries. Great names. Uh, I believe one of them is dressed like uh, a cowboy. And just looking awesome. They're all looking <laughs> awesome. Thank you. With the country theme there, I can. Yeah, see, it, it works very well. And I could be wrong. Like I said, smaller screen, but these these are amazing. And thank you so much again, Bonnie, for sending us those. If you want any of your photos to appear on our show, you can of course email us at createtv at shaw.ca. There's lots of opportunities to do some great things like that. Um, and another thing you can get on is your questions, and that's what we're going to move to right now. We're going to talk about uh, some questions that you guys can answer. Dwayne is not an expert, so we're not going <laughs> to no. ask him. You don't well, he's going to talk. Anything. I'm you not going to lie to you. He's definitely going to talk. I'll talk, but um, you don't want to hear this. We're going to have a voicemail just in one second. What I want to say to everyone is everything that all the opinions that are given are exactly that opinions. They are experts. But when it comes down, you got to make your own ultimate choice when it comes to Absolutely. your animal. Yeah. So let's take, I'm going to listen to a voicemail. This will come through and you guys can feel this question. Hi, this is a question for petology. Um, I have an overactive hamster. Um, he's been running on his wheel for five days straight, um, all day and all night, and uh, something is very wrong. I'm just wondering if you know what's happening with this hamster. Thank you. Bye. Wow. That, you could that hamster's the, probably tired. She she might be part border power, collie. <laughs> she could, if she could convert that power to energy, she could power her house. Right? Oh, yeah, but in all seriousness, fun. let's talk about that. That's a very overactive mm -hmm. pet. Do yes. you want to yes. feel that one first? Well, thing? I mean, I don't specialize in hamsters. I obviously specialize in canines. But I think just the fact that it's doing it so repetitively, there's some type of OCD or stress that this hamster is trying to alleviate you know if i was looking at a dog i'd say let's try and stimulate it get it out maybe mm. handle it uh, yeah i would agree with you i would i would say there's something that's giving this hamster a fair amount of anxiety yeah. something's mm. driving it to do this um we would consider the idea of looking into whether or not there's been any major changes to the mm -hmm. household has there been any new additions um yeah. other hamsters that have either been added to the cage or removed from the cage that have changed sort of the day-to-day -day interactions that hamsters had. Yeah. Um, I would always suggest because sometimes it can be even something as as sort of vague and nebulous as maybe the maybe the hamster is uncomfortable or there's something yeah. causing pain where he feels like he can't settle. So I mean. I would consider the idea of maybe having him looked at, you know, just to make sure that there's nothing that could be making him uncomfortable. So yeah. those, okay. those would be things to consider. Definitely stuff to, stuff to follow up on. Yeah. So let's take a look at our next one. Um, it's going to be on, we're going to take a look at the screen for our next email message that came in, which again, you could do that at createtv at shaw.ca. That's where you can send your questions into. Um, we're, we're just waiting for it to come up so we can take a look at the email. There it is. This is from Graham. He emailed this to us. It says, are automatic pet feeders good or bad? Hmm. Oh, Do you want to yeah. start, or yeah? <laughs> well, I, th I think there's a different which what pet we're referring to. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to uh, say in this one, I think Graham was referencing cats, but cats. we can go okay. back to everything. Yeah. Um, f for dogs, I don't think that they are good. Okay. Um, I think dogs um, should eat once or twice a day. It should be regulated so you know how much your dog is eating. That's going to help one behaviorally in training with your dog, and also you're going to know if your dog is sick if they're eating less or more food. Um, for cats, I think it's a little bit different yeah. um, because cats, you know, tend to graze out their eating. Um, cats do need to have, I'm sure yep. you know the name of, I want to say taurine or something yep. that they need in their yep. cat food. They have to get daily. you guys daily. Are just making up words. So, uh, <laughs> tell us what taurine is. I believe it. taurine is, is a that protein. The real one? Got it right. Cats okay. actually, they do need it in their diet and if they're not getting it, it actually it can lead to heart defects. So oh. we really, we so. want to make sure that they're getting it. So, but yeah, I would agree. Um, I do think uh, feeders can be good for cats just because, I mean, cats also tend to be, they can be pretty sedentary, right? Where they could be mm. sort of just laying around for 23 hours a day. And if you're only... I've done that. <laughs> haven't we all, right? Yeah. So, Great. Um, well done, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> it's my turn. But I mean, really, if, if you have an automatic feeder, then you have something that is now driving the cat to get up and move around multiple times a day and something that's prodding his interest. So um, that's that's kind of a nice way to get them up. And it is spacing out their meals so so that they can do a little bit of you know grazing here and there. So the one thing I was wondering about, and I, I don't, because I don't know anything, I'm just the host, why would I know anything? <laughs> Is there a level of connection with feeding the animal, having that connection to come together? Because I recently, I'm going to say, became a dog owner. <laughs> um, and mm. a lot of times, 
<laughs> my, uh, my my girlfriend says, "Oh, well, it's it's because I feed her. That's why she's yeah. nice yeah. to me." Now, is there is there actually some truth hugely, to that? Yeah. Hugely, hugely. Um, I I think it absolutely by you feeding the dog creates that bond. It teaches them to look to you for guidance. Um, and I I tell a lot of my clients, think of dog food as money. So every time the dog does something, you're paying them, you're the bank. So obviously that dog's gonna respond more to you, listen to you and be more in control as opposed to if you just put a bowl down every day and there it is, you know, go to town. So hugely, I agree. Food is a resource to them and if you become that resource provider, there's always gonna be a level of attachment to whoever is providing that resource on a regular basis. <laughs> it's taking yeah. over the yeah. house now. It's, it's all you. Right? Yeah. It's, 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 like it's all you, better. buddy. It's all well, you. We still have lots more to come and um, thank you very much for your opinion and we'll see you guys again. Um, now, we're talking about cats and we're talking about dogs. We're also talking about cats and we're talking about dogs on our Shaw TV Winnipeg Facebook page where you can pull to see which one you like better. Sammy, I'm gonna guess what your answer is. <laughs> but you can put it on Facebook and we'll talk about it in a different episode of the show. We have creepy crawlers coming up next, so that means I'm getting out of the studio and Dwayne's gonna take over, but still lots more <laughs> to come on Petology. <laughs>